Okay, this is Alex about writing tutorials. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I was telling my housemates that I was giving this talk, and I told them it was on the art of writing great WordPress tutorials, and they weren't all that excited, um, which, which saddened me deeply, because this is a, this is a really cool topic. Um, and it's really, it's also an important topic, because um, sharing knowledge is something that allows like, fundamentally human progress to develop faster. And with something like WordPress, um, the, the democratic publishing tool of the internet, better tutorials lower the barrier for entry for people getting started, for being able to take part in the community, and being able to kind of learn the skills that are increasingly a necessity in, in modern economies. So better WordPress tutorials I will argue, are fundamentally something that's incredibly important just for the general future of WordPress. But when it comes to thinking of a topic, planning, writing, editing, publishing, you know, putting yourself and your work out there, um, often the response is something like this. It's all going great. And, oh, <laughs> and then, And then we've had some problems. So we're going to, in the next half hour, we're going to address this. Can I get a hands up if you've ever published a WordPress tutorial? Cool. And if you're like aspiring to publish a WordPress tutorial? OK, interesting. Great. It's a good mix. I'm going to try and uh, mix in something for everybody um, in the next half hour or so. My name's Alex, though. Um, I've been writing WordPress tutorials since I was about 15, because I was an exceptionally cool teenager. Um, so I had a, I had a, a website uh, about video games, because teenager video games, it's perfect. Um, and I realized that I could get sent free video games if I called myself press. And this was like 2008, uh, 9. And there was, there was few enough blogs around that having a website was unique enough that you could get away with emailing PR companies being like, hello, I am the games review industry. Please send me free video games. <laughs> and it, incredibly, this worked. Um, but as more people started making their own sites, and this is running like WordPress 2.5 or something, it was like, terrible to use. Um, but I'd, you wanted to be able to differentiate. So I wanted to learn how to customize my website. But being 15 years old, I was not going to pay anyone to do that. Um, which meant I had to teach myself. So I started Googling, trying to find these WordPress tutorials. Eventually I found a website called WordPress Hacks. This was back in the day when you didn't get in trouble for using WordPress in your domain name. Um, WordPress Hacks was kind of the spiritual predecessor to Post Status and WP Tavern. Um, it's sadly now defunct, but uh, it had these wonderfully clear tutorials. And this was kind of the first place, I think, that was widely publishing WordPress tutorials. Um, and it took a problem. These are problems that I was having with my website. And it told you how to solve them. And so, you know, follow these tutorials, go out and solve these problems. And I remember I'd, I'd, I found this website just after I'd finished saving up for years to buy a laptop. And I literally stayed under the covers all night <laughs> reading these WordPress tutorials. I'm just getting blank faces of how cool I was as a teenager. <laughs> um, but eventually I started you know, solving these problems and solving the problems faster than people were making the tutorials. So I started thinking I could write these myself. So that's what I set out to do. Um, I started writing for WordPress hacks. And eventually I set up my own site, which is called WP Shout, uh, which I ran for about five years um, before I started university. Uh, in the meantime, I've written WordPress tutorials, documentation, video screencasts, all that um, for places like Smashing Magazine, uh, Themeify, WT Zoom, my theme shop, a uh, bunch of other places. So basically, I've just written a lot of WordPress tutorials, um, and I'm just going to share all of that knowledge with you in the next half an hour. Um, currently, I'm a full-time student, part-time freelancer, which makes me a time management enthusiast. So if anyone wants to talk about the Pomodoro technique, um, you know, come and find me afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is going to be kind of technical, but kind of fun. Uh, it's the final session in what's been a really great conference. Um,
I, we're all going to be so excited about WordPress tutorials by the end of this. Um, yeah. So the first thing you need is a topic. You need to know what you're going to write about. It's likely if you're doing any sort of WordPress work, um, you're going to be finding problems. And either other people won't have uh, solved these problems before, or other people will have solved them, but they won't have told anyone about it. Um, and there's kind of an information gap. We'll call it the information gap, um, where this stuff doesn't exist. And these are the best WordPress tutorials to write. Um, when nobody else has written about the thing that you've solved. And um, as, you, as you come across these things, I'd encourage you to write them down and then go back and write them. And if you're kind of fine publishing sporadically, then that, you know, that's fine. Um, because you're kind of waiting for inspiration to strike, to strike, to strike. Um, but you're relying on that happening to, to get ideas for your post. So if you're wanting to publish more regularly, um, which I definitely encourage everyone to do, because um, it kind of maximizes like your community output, um, you might like to make a more concerted effort to come up with ideas. Um, and there are a number of ways of doing this. The first one I recommend is simply asking people. Um, and this is, this is literally what it sounds like. Uh, it's really not very complex. Um, there's a guy called Sean McCabe who runs a very interesting business podcast. It's seanwes.com. And he recommends, uh, if you have an email list on your site, when people sign up for that, in the confirmation that they get, you ask people what they're struggling with. And you tell them that you will reply, uh, if, and you can start a conversation that way. And that really gives you kind of an unlimited list of things to write about. Um, because it connects you with people who are directly having problems. Um, if you're less keen on email, you might like to just ask on Twitter or Facebook, or you can use forums like Quora, uh, the WordPress subreddit, um, WP Questions. Just find out generally what people actually want to know. Um, and if you're looking to write consistently, like every week maybe, would be a good schedule to try and set. Um, then sitting down, blocking out like an hour, and writing as many post ideas as you can, will make starting writing so much easier um, when you come to actually do that. I like this quote um, from Maria Popova, who runs the exceptionally interesting brainpickings.org. She says, write for yourself. The key to being interesting is being interested and enthusiastic about those interests. This was on an interview with Tim Ferriss. Um, if you Google it, you'll find it. This is really interesting. You want to write about what you're interested in. But it's important to contrast it um, with this from Professor Will McCaskill, who's at Oxford University. Um, he runs one of the fastest growing uh, charities in the UK. He says, follow your passion is the stupidest career advice I've ever heard. Here's my slogan, do something valuable. And you often hear these two kind of thrown around, like the big P passion word. I like, what does that mean? I think, re realistically, you've got to look somewhere in the middle. You want to write about things you're actually interested in, but you've got to make sure that someone actually wants to read it, essentially. Um, certainly, when I was running WP Shout, which I would built as more like a, mainly on a development base, and then I decided, you know what, I'm not interested in that anymore. I will write about what I want. That kind of went down terribly. Um, I would recommend trying to keep a balance on that. The next step, then, once you've chosen what to write about, is probably the biggest thing that you're missing that has the capacity to transform your writing. Um, you need to plan and structure before you start writing. And if you take nothing else away from this, then please, please start planning. A plan can be anything as simple as getting a piece of paper, and setting out the problem that you're going to explain and explain what you're going to do about it. So that's kind of the introduction. You want to then offer a solution. That's the main body of the text. You want to discuss alternatives and why the option that you've chosen is best. So kind of uh, look at alternative ways of doing it. And then you want to have a conclusion. You want to wrap up. 
just summarize the main points that you've learned, but really don't forget the conclusion, because that's an exceptionally important point for making sure that people actually take away uh, from your writing what you're trying to tell them. And then you're done, um, and it's that simple. <laughs> or if you're writing a longer tutorial with more nuanced points, um, you'll want to spend more time uh, in the middle section um, probably planning out the different arguments and different points you're going to make. You can just bullet point it. The detail can be really light at this stage. Um, that can come with writing. The important thing with a plan is to signpost what you're going to say. Um, so when you start writing, especially this really helps if you're perhaps not comfortable writing. Once, if you've got a really good plan, once you start to write, you're essentially just filling in the gaps, and it's really easy. Um, so if you're not so happy uh, writing then um, this really, really does help. And you often hear that content is king, but actually planning is king. Because to get to the stage where you've got your king content, you've got to have king planning. Um, and that's something that I would really encourage you to start doing. So now we've decided what we're going to write about and planned out specifically uh, what we're going to be saying. The next stage is to write it. And there are a lot of tools available to do this. Um, I certainly have spent too long, too much time, and too much money on very expensive writing tools. I would not encourage you to do that. I would encourage you just to get on with writing. And the WordPress post editor is perfectly great for writing blog posts. It's specifically designed for that. Um, Really, you can spend so much time looking for different writing tools that just get on with it, really. If, the only caveat is if you want to use Markdown, um, which is a uh, web-specific writing language, um, then either use Markdown Pad on Windows or Ulysses on Mac. Um, those are the two to go for. Obviously, Markdown Pad on Windows is free, and Ulysses on Mac is unreasonably expensive. Um, <laughs> but you'll just have to deal with that, I'm afraid. So you're starting to write. You want to make sure your writing is accessible. And that means two things. You want to make it easy to read and comprehend and easily accessible to people using screen readers and with uh, access difficulties. And you achieve the first by using simple language. Don't overcomplicate. Don't use unnecessarily long sentence structures. Um, or vocabulary, lots of paragraph breaks, not massive chunks of text. And if you actually want to check how um, accessible your writing is, there's an app called um, Hemingway, which you'll find at HemingwayApp.com. Um, you paste in what you've written, and then you'll then be told which school grade is required to read what you've written. It's not perfect, and I, to be honest, wouldn't do everything it tells you, um, but it's a useful starting point. And you can see, just in the corner. Um, this is Hemingway rating what I've just said. And it's saying that you need about grade eight. That's the US, so it's, it's like year eight or nine. 13 year old kids in the UK. And the aim here isn't to ensure that children are okay reading what you've written, although going back to 15 year old me, obviously that's very important. Um, the aim is to ensure that those with a wide variety of comprehension abilities can easily be on the same page as you. Like reading a WordPress tutorial should not be like reading War and Peace. It wants to be really very simple. Um, the other part of accessibility is making sure nobody with specific needs uh, is going to have a problem accessing what you've written. Um, so that's kind of obvious things. Don't put lots of text in images. Make sure you've got alt tags for your images um, and captions and make sure you've got a large font with uh, good line spacing. The only other specific caveat I'd add um, is something to watch out for is formatting code. Uh, it's surprisingly difficult to embed code in posts in a way that looks nice now and is going to look nice in the future. And I can really tell you, having had like hundreds of posts break because I was using a short code that broke and you've got broken code everywhere. This is really a terrible thing that you do not want to have to deal with. The solution is um, to use pre and code tags. Um, and you want to convert your code into HTML before you paste it in. So instead of having angle brackets, for example, 
uh, you'd have the HTML output for angle bracket. And that way, WordPress isn't going to uh, try and output your code in your post. Um, but use these. By all means, use plugins that enhance this if you want to make your code have nice colors and things. Um, but don't use anything that replaces those would be my very strong recommendation because it's a right pain to have to fix all of that once it's broken. So don't worry about uh, what you're using to write. Don't overcomplicate your writing and make sure everything's accessible. Do all this and really the writing process will be painless and beautiful. And then the next step is engagement. I feel this GIF really shows that I used to work in social media. Um, so it's one thing to write uh, a WordPress tutorial. And it can, it can be well planned, well structured, well written. And, and that's fine. You know, that, that'll do. But the next step is writing something that's really interesting to read. Um, and if you're writing anything of any length, then engagement is important. You want to keep the reader interested throughout. And sure, like your, your topic's going to do a lot of that, and they wouldn't be reading it if they weren't interested in what you're trying to say. Um, but you kind of want to surprise and delight the reader. What's appropriate here will uh, depend a lot on where you're publishing. But to be honest, uh, I think all but the most kind of corporate blogs uh, will be perfectly fine with whatever. And the three secrets here are images, memes, and GIFs. And these, these are actually the best way of keeping readers interested, as mildly childish as they are. Um, relevant stock images is a really useful starting point. In the last couple of years, there's been a much more of a movement towards high quality stock images, um, which is great because uh, the stuff that people were using before was terrible. Um, but it means it's really easy to get hold of free, really good, really high quality images. Um, and the site linked here, sitebuilderreport.com slash stock dash up is the one to use. Uh, it will search 26 of the high quality free stock image sites that you're going to use anyway, but it has it all in one place and it makes it really easy for you. I would, I would bookmark this now um, because it will make finding images much easier. Um, relevant memes and GIFs are also good um, because they can visualize a point you're trying to say. They, can, they, they turn into pictures an expression or frustration you're trying to convey, and it's, it's, it's humorous. Memes and GIFs are funny, right? And, and that's my meme. That's my GIF that, with the visualization of the realization that I am right about this. Uh, the other more subtle trick uh, is, is calls to action. Um, this, is, this is literally what it sounds like. Um, it's kind of calling on your reader to take some action that you want them to take. And that might be integrating small tasks into your tutorial. So I just realized it's a terrible idea to keep this looping. <laughs> um, but there's, there's no real way of changing that now, so we'll have to deal with it. <laughs> um, so calls to action. These are important because it's changing your tutorial from something that's passively, um, we just kind of go to the next slide, and I'm going to have to rely on me memorizing this. <laughs> calls to action. Change your tutorial from something that's been passively read to something that's actively consumed. And this is really important because in terms of learning experience and people actually taking away from what you've written, uh, you know, your, your main point, this is going to make sure that they retain that knowledge. Um, so you might ask them to uh, undertake small tasks using the example, give them a challenge, that kind of thing. Or you can simply uh, start a discussion, ask people to reply on Twitter, in the comments, email you, look at alternative uh, ways of doing what you've done. And as I said, this is, this is going to transform your tutorial from something that's passive to something that's active, and that's going to make your learning, from the reader's point of view, much more effective, which is fundamentally what we're trying to do here. I think I covered everything. Yeah, OK. Um, with the content planned, then, the blanks filled in uh, from that plan. 
uh, accessible, engaging writing, all done. It's time to publish. Well, nearly. Doing publishing now, um, which is, is very easy to do, and certainly I'm guilty of uh, finishing a blog post, finishing the last sentence, hitting publish, and then realizing, you know, oh, crap, got to add, got to add meta description, got to add featured images, got to add categories. Missing, publishing straight away is a terrible idea, basically. <laughs> um, ideally, you're leaving 24 hours between finishing and publishing. And in that time, you're going to uh, edit. Editing is where you transform your, like, OK content into really great content. Um, and this is really important. And editing is often overlooked. This is kind of number two of key things that you might not be doing so much that you really want to be doing. Um, and you know, editing is a thing that people don't like because you finished it, right? But it's important not to look at a, what, a, at a complete blog post as a finished blog post. It is a draft, um, and you need to spend time improving that. And this happens in the editing process. Um, there are a couple of basics you want to cover off. You want to get the spelling and grammar right. You know, like simple spell check will do the job here, but there's nothing worse than uh, hitting publish and being like the first comment is like, you misspelled a word. <laughs> like, you don't want that. Make sure you've got that right. It's built into your browser, that'll be fine. Um, make sure what you've written looks good where you're publishing it. Um, so you use WordPress's preview function to check what it will look like uh, in the place that you're publishing. Uh, you might find you need to add more paragraph breaks. You need to align your images differently. Uh, you need to resize things. Like check all that now, and make sure that we talked about earlier with uh, accessible writing that's easy to comprehend. Make sure that what you've written fits in nicely where you're publishing it. Add style is the third point. Um, bold key points, italicize for emphasis. Um, this helps break up the text and lets people scan through what you've written. Because I, it's the sad reality that no one actually would probably read all of what you've written. People scan, and like we all do it. Uh, and bolding key points helps people more easily get key takeaways from what you've written. Also, um, I said leave 24 hours. It's because you want to kind of make sure that the blog post isn't fresh in your mind when you go back to edit because that way you'll much better spot the mistakes that you've made uh, or changes that you need to make. Um, for longer posts, it's a little bit more involved. You're going to want to check the structure and flow of what you've written. Does each paragraph lead on to the next? Have you actually made a coherent blog post that makes sense from start to end? Like your plan will help a lot with that. Um, but in the editing stage, you can really uh, make sure that what you've written uh, is something, is something good, which is really what we're after. The final point is, is not going to be something you want to hear, uh, but it's you should delete a lot of what you've written. I, I personally, I try and delete a quarter of what I've written. Um, and, and this doesn't sit too well, especially when you hear about you should write long form. Here's a, here's a killer secret. You shouldn't write long form. You should write good. And long form, for the sake of it, uh, is, is not helpful. So get rid of everything that is not necessary. Anything superfluous can go. Uh, and Hemingway, which I mentioned earlier, is helpful for this. So superfluous was superfluous there. That should have gone, but I was, I was making a point. Um, if you can say something in a shorter number of words, then just do that. Do not like uh, fall into the trap of fetishizing long form. You want to be fetishizing good writing. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's long. It just means it's coherent and to the point. Um, and then the final check is that uh, all of your extras, like your featured images, your read more tags, your excerpts, uh, your categories, your tags, make sure that they're all there. Um, and then finally, you can hit publish. And with that, I offer you my congratulations, because you've not only written the WordPress tutorial and shared your knowledge, but you've written kind of the gold standard 
for helping strangers on the internet. Um, and that's, that's really the aim here. You want to choose a topic. You want to intersect what you're interested in with what people actually need. Think about those two quotes um, about uh, what you're passionate about versus uh, what adds value. You want to plan before you start writing. Get a, get a small notebook, A5, that'll do. Uh, this doesn't have to be complicated. Just bullet point or signpost the key points you're going to be making. Um, you want to write clearly and accessibly. Don't use ex extraneous language. Um, add lots of paragraph breaks. Make it a joy to read what you've written. Um, because, as I said, this shouldn't be like reading War and Peace. It shouldn't be difficult to read a WordPress tutorial. You want to keep readers engaged. Um, that means exciting them with exciting images of, of llamas and sheep. Um, you want to edit profusely, which means cutting out a lot of what you've written, which is, is not a pleasant experience, but we're, we're going to do it from now on. <laughs> and then you publish. And that's, that's really all I have to say about writing WordPress tutorials. I really, really would encourage you to uh, start publishing regularly. I, as, as sad as it sounds, writing WordPress tutorials has changed my life. <laughs> like it got me my first job, uh, and it provided the basis of the freelance career I'm planning on starting when I finish university in like a matter of days. Um, you know, email me. <laughs> um, uh, publish, publishing is great, and as I said at the start, publishing better tutorials, fundamentally getting better at this process, is something that can make the community, the world, people's lives, just generally a better place. Um, that's really all I have to say. We can be friends on Twitter if you like, or we can just like, be casual acquaintances. I don't mind. Uh, <laughs> I'll link these slides. And maybe I will even put the transcript up in blog post format. Obviously, it will be shorter and more condensed following an extensive editing process. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's really my best wisdom on beautiful WordPress tutorials. Um, thank you for listening. If you have any questions. Thank you very much, Alex. Top. Um Top talk there to end track B. So I'll open the floor up now to any questions. And if you have anything to ask, pop your hand in the air and I'll come over with a mic. Yes, here we go. Hi. Um, do you have on any do you have any tips on writing tutorials for our clients rather than just the general reader? Right, um, yeah, so what works great with clients is video tutorials. Um, and these don't actually have to be that complicated. You can get free software. If you've got Mac, you can just use QuickTime. Um, and if you're showing clients how to do things, uh, then the, the most foolproof method is to do it and narrate it. It doesn't have to be polished, uh, but they will appreciate that. And to be honest, it's quicker for you to spend five minutes just doing it, and then the client can learn from that. Um, something I didn't actually mention is, uh, if kind of related to that, stick animated GIFs of screen caps of your whatever you're doing. Um, that can be a nice hybrid. Did you have any? Uh, ideas of software to do it because I've tried to find really good ones that don't make my gifts look like Jesus did them. Like I wanted something really high quality to put on my website or to give them to my clients. There's do one called know? Record It. Record it. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure it's free and like, it works. Um, I think that's for Mac. I don't know of any for Windows. I'm afraid. So as someone that has a uh, diagnosed learning disability and mm -hmm. my spelling is absolutely atrocious, even not for lack of effort, yeah. um, 
I, I slip past every time, every spell checker out there. Mm -hmm. How, is there a way you would recommend addressing the audience in a consistent way um, to help them be more forgiving of that? Because I know for me, it's definitely kept me from writing in public forums more, even though I'd like to be able to express okay. things and thoughts. So. Um, well, I, I think, so personally, I recommend get an editor, get someone else to do the editing process. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that sounds expensive and complicated, but like, uh, I get one of my friends to, do, to just check over it. Um, that would be a way of, of fixing that other source rather than kind of help letting the audience relate. But equally, uh, you could put it in your bio or whatever, um, that the, the ideas are solid, it's, it's just uh, you have, Sometimes. Yeah, and Sorry, I find it funny. Like, it's not a big deal to me. It's, well, no, is it's it my life? It's what I have to work with. Sure. Around, so I don't mind. It's just I know I don't want to turn people off from reading because because of that. Yeah. So in my experience with friends who have difficulty uh, writing, get getting someone to edit it is the best solution. I'd really recommend that. Just to jump in there, there are many bloggers out there who record and speak. You speak quite eloquently and you can uh, then send that off to get transcribed. Our captioning ladies at the front might be uh, rough. <laughs> I just actually wanted to add uh, practice. Practice, practice. Don't let it keep you from writing. Just the more you do, the better you get. Can I add something to this? Yeah, yeah. Like, I have the same problem, like, I'm dyslectic, um, but for me it's, like, as well, like, practicing, and um, sometimes, like, I'm, like, how you say, regular posting, it's really important, so if I don't have time, I just hire somebody who, like, I write notes and then write everything, or for me it works really good, um, just video tutorials, because I'm pretty good in talking, and so I just talk, and it's, yeah, but you're getting better if you just write, and also, um, if not, I just use Google, tra um, like, just Google to check if it's right or not, it's, like, a few seconds, so, yeah. Any more hands for a question? Maybe. You should go for it. If it's a maybe, it's a yes. <laughs> so, uh, as much as like the WordPress community is incredible, but you also get so much bloat in mm -hmm. WordPress blogs and stuff. Yeah. Do you think it's... Uh, what do I want to ask? Uh, so, if you want to actually write almost the same blog posts, but yours, you're actually yeah. writing it, maybe hopefully changing something for yeah. the better or something more modern. Is it okay to add yeah, to your so, portfolio? So uh, people write a lot of crap. Yeah. And I, maybe I shouldn't say this at a WordCamp, but WordPress specific blogs publish a lot of shit, right? <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, like nobody needs tens of hundreds of, of theme roundups. Um, but there is, there's always a space for quality. Um, and certainly if you think, if you see what other people are doing and you think I can do that better, uh, go for it. Yeah. Like, I would really, really Sometimes I saw that. that, like, there are this, the exact same issue or problem or tutorial. There are different ways to write. But I also found that sometimes every person has a very different way of loving a tutorial, how it's structured, mm -hmm. and even how it's laid out or... Or, yeah. So, I guess I don't. It's not a question anymore. I think it's just me <laughs> thinking out loud, <laughs> improvising. That maybe it's good, even if you don't feel guilty about writing, rewriting something, uh, if you think that you're writing it in a, maybe in a new way or more. Yeah, and uh, it, it comes back to writing what you're interested in, and add, but adding value. Yeah. And if 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 you're writing essentially the same thing, but it's you know, it's got a slight edge better. on better, uh, then by all means, I, yeah, I don't, really don't have a problem with that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, great talk, by the way, I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, my question kind of like carries on from the chaps over there. Um, hi. Um, uh, in terms of um, you know um, building on somebody else's blog uh, mm -hmm. blog post that you could obviously write better, do you sometimes explicitly respond 
to other people's blog posts um, and kind of say, I've added to this, here you go, how, how, what do you think of this kind of... Do you get involved with other bloggers in that respect, I suppose? Um, it really depends. Uh, it depends if... So say, for example, someone who you know or someone else who's like prominent in the WordPress community writes a thing and then you think you can do it better and you publish that. But I, I think in that situation, I would definitely directly respond, maybe reach out to them beforehand Sure. Uh, or whatever. If it, but like, if it's if some like anyone can publish anything on the internet. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose uh, I suppose I don't mean in a in a conflicting way. I suppose in, I mean, you could kind of build on that. Say, hey. Look. Yeah. You, there are ways of doing these things without just being vindictive about it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, and by all means, be nice. That's that's definitely a, a thing that's positive. Um, but yeah. But like as I mentioned in structuring. Uh, you do want to be discussing alternatives. You do want to be setting out why. You, you want to be able to defend why what you've done is is the best way of doing it, right? Um, I suppose it's inter interesting to get a dialogue going as well. If you yeah, have different um, I think that's something as a student. That's I don't mean a YouTube fight or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Constructive dialogue. Yeah, as, as a student, that's something that you see a, a lot in the academic world. Um, when people have like very constructive discussions, even with people they like, very strongly disagree with, um, it's still pleasant. Like, just, I, yeah, so by all means, do that. Just, just really don't be unpleasant about it. I'll be nice. <laughs> Thank you. Related to the earlier question, um, do you do any content remarketing and like active promotion of your contents to get more people to visit you? And how do you do that? Okay, uh, so I could talk for a very long time about this, and I kind of purposefully didn't touch on it. Um, so, where to start, really? Uh, there's no point writing something that's a tutorial specifically to help people if no one is going to read it, really. Um, if you, but if you've written good content, that kind of adds value to the WordPress community. Uh, there is still truth to the idea that if you write good content, people will read it. And there are some like really simple things you can do, uh, like submit it to the WordPress subreddit. Um, there's a weekly email, wpmail.me. Uh, if you email the people who run that, they are very good at including things. And if you've written something interesting, uh, they're typically very responsive about doing that. Um, like share it on Twitter using appropriate hashtags, uh, like relevant Slack communities, that kind of thing. Um, there is still a lot of truth that if you publish good things, people will want to read them, but only because of the kind of power of the community in general. If you don't do those things, it's perfectly possible that no one will read it. Um, so those are kind of some simple steps that I would recommend doing. Um, because, you know, ultimately, you're not helping anyone if no one reads it. Hey, thanks for the talk. It was great. And I do have a question. Um, somebody talked to said updates and that uh, made me think of it. Uh, so you publish your tutorial, mm -hmm. and then time goes by, and something changes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe somebody points out something that you overlooked or leaves a comment and you decide that's really great. I guess if there's really a big change, maybe you would write a second, like a follow-up yeah. article. But imagine that you just want to add something after the fact. Yeah. Do you have recommendations on the best, most effective ways yeah. to not okay. only so I have a, I have format, but also then communicate? I have a lot of experience with this because I wrote a lot of WordPress tutorials that got out of date and then I left them. <laughs> um, so don't do that. Uh, some simple things you can do uh, to keep it up to date. You can change the uh, publish date on, on your theme or whatever. Uh, change it to show published or last updated. Um, and so when you do update it recently, people will be able to see that. Um, you can perhaps add a note at the top. Uh, like add a, put it in a nice box, use a short code or something for that. Uh, and 
tell people that it was originally published on this date, you've now updated it with X, Y, Z. Um, there's css-tricks.com, the guy who runs that, Chris Coyer, is, is very good at uh, keeping stuff up to date and communicating how he's up updated it, basically. Um, I would highly recommend that's checking out his stuff um, because that's kind of the gold standard. Tell people when you've updated it. Uh, whether you leave the original post in full and then maybe perhaps add changes at the top, personally, I would just uh, delete whatever is not necessary, add new stuff in, but just say you've be open that you've updated it. Thanks. Okie dokie, I think that was our final question. Any more hands up? A big hand for Alex.